Good morning. So I thought I'd share um, a bit of a video diary of what it's like to go through the gastric sleeve surgery, um, sleevectomy, um, whatever various people call it. Um, those of us going through it just call it the sleeve. Um, for those that haven't gone through it or have no idea what I'm talking about, they removed 90% of my stomach. So this is my first video. Um, my surgery was Friday morning. Uh, the surgery went well. Luckily, not luckily, I've been through a couple of surgeries in my life, really long ones. So I wake up really well. I don't have any of the, the, the extra issues that some people have with anesthesia. The other luckily is I don't have any of the other typical fat person challenges. I'm, I'm blessed that, um, well, part blessed and part been working really hard at it for years to take good care of myself. Um, I don't have diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, hypertension, uh, cholesterol. I have basically nothing wrong with me except for I have thyroid cancer and I'm fat and I have a busted out knee. But aside from that, I don't really have anything wrong. Um, so anyway, back to what's going on now. Uh, today is day three. Today is Monday. Surgery was Friday. I'm home, thankfully. I got to come home yesterday. Uh, the first day, I got to say, the first day in the hospital, Saturday, um, it was awful. Um, I regretted the decision to do it. Uh, if a genie had appeared in front of me, I would have reversed my decision. Um, and it, it was partly about food, but just partly about how awful I felt. And I felt alone and strange and weird and Nothing felt right. My own body felt weird. Um, because when they do the surgery, it's laparoscopy. They go in through holes in your stomach. They inflate your stomach. So you end up with these weird gas pains. Like like I had a gas pain in my shoulder because there's an air bubble stuck up here. It was very odd. And um, let's face it, your stomach's kind of important. Even if you're the healthiest person in the world, you need to be able to drink water and stuff. And Anyway... So on Saturday, I had hoped to go home. The original plan was one day in the hospital and then go home. Um, but that didn't work out. My scan showed I was borderline. They didn't want to let me go home. And I just melted down. I, I'd been on ice chips since the midnight of Thursday before. So by Saturday, I'd been on ice, nothing but ice chips and sitting with small sips of water for 30 hours. And that's after four weeks of the liquid diet. And I'm in a ward, so I'm in a room with three other people. And at one point Saturday afternoon, just after I was told that I didn't get to go home, um, all the three other people in the room started getting visitors. And it wasn't about the visitors, <laughs> although they were noisy. Um, it was about, it was almost, it was mostly about the food. Because I was still wasn't allowed anything. I hadn't even been allowed my broth yet, which technically on day one, uh, for the first four days, I'm going to, strict clear liquid diet so clear broth water watered down juice and jello and preferably with protein powder mixed in but at the hospital it's just the clear stuff but anyway i hadn't been allowed any of it yet so there i am pathetic bawling sucking on an ice chip and so first my neighbor right across from me the one i can see the best her husband shows up with a dozen crullers from tim's and cough and the smell, well, after the four-week liquid diet and then the surgery, I am like a truffle pig now for food. I can smell food at 100 paces. So crullers and coffee across from me. I am not happy. And then the guy in the bed just to the right of me, who all he does is snore when he doesn't have visitors, his family shows up and they've got something in a casserole. I, if I had to lay odds, I would say it was either lasagna or shepherd's pie. So again... I am not a happy camper as I'm sitting there sucking on my ice chip. And then the lady, Kitty Corner, Middle Eastern lady. Well, she's been in the hospital for a while. She had something major go on. She had huge amounts of surgery. But anyway, she's at a point where she's allowed to eat anything she wants. So her visitors are morning, noon, and night, and nothing but a nonstop stream of the most amazing smelling Middle Eastern foods. And if anybody knows me, I like real food. 
So as bad as the coffee and crullers were, it was a hell of an intro to everything else that went on. So they brought her stews and, and uh, anyway. So basically my whole room smelled like a food court. And I'm surrounded by loud, noisy people. And I'm still being told they're deciding whether or not I can have my clear broth. And I'm sucking on my ice chip. And I just started to bawl. It's like, what the hell were you thinking? This is ridiculous. You can't do this. It's not normal to cut off a person's stomach. Anyway, finally for supper, they let me have broth. I got to have veg broth, and I managed to ingest about a half a cup of it. And after a half a cup, half a cup of veg broth, I had a cup of veg broth. I had a little cup of apple juice. I hate apple juice. Apple juice, ugh. But anyway, it's not ice chips. And a little half cup of jello. Well, all I managed to get in me was the half a cup of broth. You know how you feel after a huge meal? Like picture after Thanksgiving dinner, you eat a bunch of turkey and a bunch of stuff, and then you, you've got that, you're exhausted, sleepy, your body just wants to, I don't know, sleep while it chews on all the calories. Well, that's how my body felt after my half a cup of broth. I slept for two solid hours, even with all the noise and the craziness in the room, while my body just went, ooh, look at that, something not water, how excited am I? So yeah, that's what it feels like once you've had 90% of your stomach removed. A half a cup of broth makes you feel like you've had a giant Thanksgiving meal. And it's ought to work out well down the road. So that's Saturday, and then yesterday, I got to come home. I can't even tell you how happy that is. I think part of the huge wave of depression on Saturday was just the being trapped in the hospital and not having control over anything. You know, like not when I can go pee and I was still attached to things and I had an oxygen tube around my head and an IV in this arm and and the, the, the blood gas monitor thing and... and you know, when, when you're strapped to something every inch of you and you have to ask permission to go to the can, it's really annoying. Anyway, yesterday I got to come home. First thing I did when I got home, made myself some broth. Broth is a big thing. Like I told you, first four days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, clear broth, clear liquids, watered down juice, and jello. So I made myself some broth with protein powder. So now I'm finally getting some nutrition. And so that was yesterday. I managed tops, 100 mils of broth, and then again, crashed, went to sleep. I managed to sip some more water, and then last night I got up in the evening and had some juice mixed with protein powder, which is awful. Broth is okay, but this is what the juice looks like. I mean, it's not shook. See the protein powder in the bottom? It's disgusting. And and you know what I did? I was really stupid. They said, just get regular juice, normal juice, like just anything as long as it's real, no sugar added, no pulp. No, me with all my research I did, I decided I'm going to get the super healthy stuff. So this is the juice, fresh, organic, part veg, part juice. This is supposed to be orange and pineapple. Yeah. It. It makes me miss my shakes from the four-week liquid diet. And anyone who's talked to me about those shakes that I hated with a passion for four weeks, this makes me miss the shakes. I hate it. I'm going to have to get myself just some regular juice. What was I thinking going to the extra degree? But, you know, I've been working so hard for so many years to be super healthy. I thought if I can only drink a sip at a time, I want every sip to be super. Well, you know what? Like the nurse says, during the first month after surgery, do whatever you can to get something into your body. Stop stressing about it. Do whatever you can to get something into your body. Anyway, so screw that. I got myself some water, added a little bit of protein, used one of these really cheesy, no vitamins included water enhancers, but it covers up the protein. So I'm still getting protein in me. I'm still getting the water in me. And this, as you can tell, is drinkable. This is awful. So anyone who decides to do this, 
in your first couple of days, don't worry about the veg juices and all that extra organic crap. If you're anything like me, it's just anything that gets it into your body. So today is my first whole day at home. I woke up when I wanted to, although making sure the cats don't walk on my stomach during the night was really interesting. I had to barricade myself a little bit because as much as cats walking on you is painful at the best of times, when you got big giant holes in your gut and staples and stuff is sensitive, we'll say, really not good. Suddenly, my 10 pound cat weighs 600 pounds and it feels like he's going to puncture my spleen. So keeping them off was good. But being home alone is great. Um, I sent Uncle John home yesterday. I woke up when I wanted to wake up. The bathroom is 10 feet away from the bed. Whenever I'm ready to put something in me, I either go get more water. I have Jello made in the fridge, and it gets to stay in the fridge rather than on my bedside table at the hospital, melting. And I'm ready for a day. Today I have a couple of phone calls to make. But mostly it's just about me, which is strange. I'm not used to doing that. I have six weeks off work, and it's going to be about me. Making sure I'm healthy, making sure I'm drinking my water, making sure I'm moving around. I've got my step counter. Making sure I'm, you know, well, there's a limit. I'm not allowed to lift anything over 10 pounds for a month. But um, it should be interesting. All in all, I feel good. So I feel like I hit complete rock bottom on Saturday. Yesterday was happy but rough coming home. I have 473 prescriptions to take. I have to give myself daily injections. Oh, God, prescriptions. Let's talk about prescriptions. So I always was taking Synthroid because of the thyroid cancer. And I always was taking Cymbalta at night for the pain in my knee. So now I have um, I have a prescription for Dilaudid if there's a lot of pain, which during the night there was, but this morning I'm back on Tylenol. And I have a prescription for Tylenol. I have a prescription for these wonderful 50 plus. Yes, there's nothing that makes a woman feel sexier than saying 50 plus. I have these wonderful chewable diet vitamins that I have to take every night. Every morning, I start my day with a pill that cuts down on the acid in your stomach um, so that the acid in my stomach doesn't chew up my stitches. <laughs> so I have to take that, and then I have to wait a half hour before I drink or do anything. And then I take my Synthroid. And then later in the evening, I also have, besides my Cymbalta, what's the other thing I have? Oh, yes, uh, vitamin D, because I have a vitamin D deficiency they discovered while I was in. <coughs> Excuse me. That was a moment. Um, so at night I take vitamin D. That's for five days. And then after five days I take that once a week. That's going to be a strange one to remember, but I have it written down. And in case I need, I have something for nausea, which so far... Actually, let's knock on real wood. No need for anything for nausea because I've been very good with what's going in. And I also have stool softeners in case I have diarrhea. Uh, not diarrhea, the other one. Constipation. <coughs> it's amazing how many muscles you use when you cough. Okay. And, uh, yeah. And I also have these injections I was mentioning. I have to give myself an injection every day in the tummy. Um, luckily, I have lots of tummy. And the nurse actually said that to me. It's the first time in my life. And I lift my shirt while I'm in the hospital, and she's doing the injection. And she goes, Oh, merveilleux! Vous avez assez un gros estomac. On n'a pas besoin de pincer. So normally, when you give yourself a, a subcutaneous injection, you have to squeeze and then put in the, the needle. Well, the nurse was so happy. That I have a big enough stomach I don't have to squeeze. I've never had anybody be overjoyed at the size of my stomach. Anyway, so once a day for 50 days, I have to give myself this injection. It's a blood thinner to avoid blood clots. Because I don't want to have an embolism of some kind. And uh, yeah, that's it. Lots and lots of injections. Lots and lots of meds. We spent... <coughs> <coughs> oh, half hour at the pharmacy, Uncle John and I. I waited in the car, he went in, very sweet, and got it all. I had a big, giant bag. From, I've never had a giant bag from the pharmacy. 
normally my entire monthly prescription normally this is my monthly prescription Synthroid Cymbalta just that so obviously no giant bag needed now I add these two things these are the dailies plus the vitamins plus the shots anyway Uncle John was leaving the pharmacy yesterday and he actually asked them he said do you have a dolly or something <laughs> yeah because it was a big giant bag so that's new I'm not used to that level of meds but that's all right all in all, I had a really good night's sleep, and uh, it's funny, people keep asking me, am I okay being alone? I'm actually quite thrilled I'm alone. Um, I have lots of people who love me and check on me, like I've already spoken to Uncle John and Daddy today, um, and I call and check in with Daddy and Uncle John every day. I text with Dad morning, noon, and night whenever I'm awake or he's awake, um, and various friends online that I check in with. So I feel very well taken care of. If I need something, crook my little finger, somebody will come and run it. But the fact that I'm alone is good. One, I don't have to entertain, entertain anybody. And for those of you who keep wanting to do things like visit people in the hospital, take my word for it. It sucks for the person who's sick. Anything beyond a 10-minute visit, all we feel is that we have to entertain you. Don't be one of those visitors who has to be entertained. If you must visit someone, make it quick, make it short, get your ass out of there. Anyway, that could just be me. But anyway, I don't have to entertain anyone. I can sleep when I want, move around when I want. I'm walking around in a t-shirt and underwear, which is fabulous. Why make extra laundry for nothing? I'm in my own house. The curtains are closed. Well, except for here. I don't have curtains here, but they can't see it. And I don't care anyway. If you want to go out of your way to peak, you earned it. Knock yourself out. Here's staple number five. Um, let me see what else. Oh, yeah. No food smells. I cannot say this enough. No food smells. The only food that's happening, like right now, if you open my fridge, you know what you see in my fridge? A case of water. Bunches of bottles of juice, and I've already got milk in there ready for as of day five, because as of day five, I'm allowed to add milk. I bought this super expensive lactose-free kind, so I don't have to take extra pills, and I'm allowed cream of wheat and things like that, but that's it. I'm, I'm ready for, for day five. But I basically have juice and water and jello in my fridge. That's it. Nothing else. There's no food happening. There's no cooking happening. There's no microwave sounds happening. There's no anything, and it's weird. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Part of it is temptation. But because of the four-week liquid diet, I'm kind of off food, so I'm okay. There are still things that I think would make me psychotic if they were in the house. Like if somebody ordered pizza from my favorite restaurant and it showed up in this house, I'd have to hurt something hard. I just, there, there would be blood. Um, but other things I don't really care. It's just annoying to smell food when the beginning, middle, and end of the excitement of your current diet is this. You see the ditch water here? This is the main part of what's going into my body right now. So I don't want to be sipping my ditch water, which, don't get me wrong, is fabulous, way better than just ice chips, very grateful for my ditch water. I don't want to be sipping my ditch water while someone else is eating lasagna. That's just rude. And I'm not allowed coffee yet. So I'm glad there's not even someone in the house drinking coffee. It's way easier to be on my own. Oh my good lord, 19 minutes I've been babbling. I think for my first video, this is officially enough. So this is me signing off on day, so Friday. I'll, I'm counting surgery as not day one. So one, two, three. Today is day three after surgery. Yeah. Yay me.